What a joy it is to turn to our, in our Bibles to Numbers chapter number 16. Numbers chapter 16. After, uh, you know, we don't know how many years of wandering, this particular part of the book of, of, uh, of Numbers, uh, from here to about uh, chapter number maybe 19 or so, uh, covers 38 years. You know, that, that's, that's a lot of, lot of things. Uh, a lot of things could have happened that were not even recorded. But the, 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 the main things are, are recorded so that we can understand and that the people will understand that uh, uh, what uh, God is doing and work, how God is working in people's lives. Um, this is, this, uh, the title of this one is A, a Political Uprising. Now, you know, uh, politics is, is uh, something that... Uh, uh, you know that that we we just uh, we we despise. <laughs> we I just I, I really I really do. I just don't. Th- I, lo- I hate it. Uh, I just you know it's it's just it's just you know so so consuming from for everybody. Uh, you know every time there's an election, you know everybody gets on one side or the other, and uh, you know it's it's a uh, it's it's a it's a hard thing to to deal with, but. Uh, but th- there was even uh, uh, political uprisings going on way back uh, in here in the book of Numbers, chapter 16. So let's read in uh, verse number 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. I... I I, I see your troubles, troubles are brewing already when they get a bunch of men together. Uh, and uh, notice that it says in verse 2, And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. You know, hey, uh, I, I can remember times when uh, they, you know, the people today, you know, what do they do? They get all the people that uh, the men of renown uh, people's heard of, people's, people knows about, and they get them together and they try to say, well, this, these people are for me, you know, and, uh, vote for me because these people are for me. Uh, but this wasn't an election. This was a takeover. Kohath, uh, I mean, Korah, he, he, just, he just said, uh, he was just saying, uh, uh, you know, I, you've led long enough, now it's time for somebody else to lead. Now, they didn't recognize the fact that God was, was orchestrating all this. It wasn't just Moses. I mean, Moses didn't decide to do all this. I mean, he didn't, you know. He didn't just come over there and say, you know, he would have been happy if he'd stayed in Midian, over there with the sheep, you know. That, that's where Moses wanted to be. He didn't have any, any, any worries. He didn't have any cares. And then one day, he sees this burning bush, and his life is turned upside down from that point on. And, uh, you know, he told God that he couldn't do it. And God kept saying, don't worry, I, I can take care of that. I can, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. And he had, he's, he'd been taking care of everything. And so God, God will do that for us if we will just obey him and do what he says. So Moses said, well, okay, Lord, I'll go. And he did. And, uh, you know, and his brother went with him because his brother was uh, already on the way to meet him. And, uh, and then, they, then they went, and, uh, and they went in, and the rest is history. Amen? And uh, so uh, the first thing we're going to see about this political uprising is presumption and punishment. You know, it, you know there's, there's a lot to say about presumption. You know, you say, what, a, what is presumption anyway? Presumption is uh, taking something for yourself that doesn't belong to you and using it as if, as if you've been given a God-given talent or, or ability to do it. That is presumptuous. You better wait, watch out because God will show forth his, his wrath in that kind of an activity. And notice that uh, he... Uh, he moves to take over the leadership. So he, he comes and he stands face to face with Moses. You know, he just, he just came. Now, he was a Levite too. Moses was a Levite as well, believe it or not. 
uh, and he, he was a Levite as well. And, and uh, he came and he said, uh, now, uh, 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 you know, we, we, we've, we've seen a lot of things going on. And uh, we don't think they're going just right and the way we want it to go or it should go for the people. And, uh, you know, the people, you know, they thought that, that it was all you know, about them. You know, and just people of the church today think, think it's all about them. Uh, but you know what? It's not. It's not about us. It's about him. And if, if we take our eyes off of him, the same thing will happen to us that happened to, to Peter out on the water. We'll start sinking. We will, we will go down without any help. And, uh, and so, uh, so they rose up, these, these, uh, these, these sons of, uh, of On, the sons of, uh, of, uh, of Eliab and, the, and Kohath and, and, his, and his family, and they were all there, the sons of Reuben, uh, and they, they, uh, they collected up 250 of the others that were princes in the, in the land and the nation. And, uh, you know, and they were, they were people that people looked up to. And, uh, you know, thought, well, you know, these people won't, uh, won't do anything. Uh, and I've seen a lot of churches ruined by, uh, by associates or assistants that try to take over for the pastor. You know, that's not the job of an assistant. What is the job of an assistant? The job of an assistant is to assist. That and nothing more. If, if, the, if the job of the, the assistant was to run the show, then he would be the pastor. But, but he is, you know, that, that's just not the way God deals with things. And, uh, you know, so I've seen, I've seen many, many churches just completely split and fall apart because people don't recognize their position. You know, it's, and, and, you know, some people think, well, if you're not the pastor, then you're nothing. Well, I, da I dare say that, uh, you know, I've been in the, uh, an assistant for over, uh, for, for over 50 years. And even with the two years I pastored the church, I was just the assistant to God. He's, he's, I'm following him. You know, if we follow him, we don't have to worry about it. But notice that they were wanting, they were wanting a man to follow. We, you know, said, you know, there's, we want a captain over us. We want somebody, somebody over us that, that we can look up to. And, uh, boy, I think if they couldn't look up to a man that put his rod out over the Red Sea and the sea opened up and they walked over on dry land, and now what do they want? I mean, give me a break. This is, uh, they, 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 just, uh, they just really didn't, uh, didn't have it all together there. Verse number three. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Now, Aaron kind of, he kind of just gets, uh, you know, taken advantage of in all of this because Aaron, Aaron was, the, the, you know, he was, he was the, uh, the, the priest and uh, he he was uh, he he just sort of got uh, got bamboozled into everything that he was he was doing, and uh, but notice that he he said and they they gathered themselves together against Moses and Aaron and said unto them, "Ye take too much upon you." They, in other words, we don't like the way you're running this show. We think we can do better. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of deacon boards and deacons and, uh, and all that, that are in churches, and they were saying the same thing about, well, we think we can do it better, you know? But you don't run a, uh, you don't run a church like, like it's an amusement, you know? You, you don't run a church like that. You run a church by giving God the glory, giving him first place, and then... Uh, then the church can be run properly. He says, you take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. What's wrong with that, with, with that statement? They weren't all holy, were they? <laughs> you know, they, there they were. There, there they were out there in the middle of the desert because they couldn't, couldn't uh, uh, go into the land because they, they were in unbelief. 
And, uh, you know, that, and it would have been better for them, they said, that if we had just never left Egypt. But you know what? That wasn't where, when they were crying out for, to God in the book of, of uh, Exodus chapter 1 and 2, and God was hearing their, their cries, and he said, uh, okay, I'll send, them a, I'll send them a deliverer. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I guess they thought that they were going to get to choose the deliverer that they wanted. They probably thought the, that he was going to ride in on a white horse and, and uh, do that. Instead, he walks in, and uh, he's, all he's got is this, this rod with him, and uh, then he's got, got his, uh, his brother with him. And, uh, you know, and he says, and they, they just really thought that, uh, you know, well, you know, this is just, this is not what we thought it was going to be, you know. And why, why, why would they have any kind of an idea of what it was going to be like if they've never been through it any, anyway before? Or so they, they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. All right, and uh, so when they, when they said that, uh, hey, that all the people are holy, we got all we got is a holy people, you know. How, how many people could could uh, raise their hand and say, well, you know, well, I'm holy, you know, and uh, I never sin. I don't see any hands going up around here, you know. But you know what? I, I think that uh, that when uh, when we uh, when we really get down to it, we we look at it on face value when we say, you know. They didn't know what they were talking about. So when Moses heard, uh, they, they, they gathered themselves together. He says, you take too much upon you. He says, everyone uh, seeing uh, all the congregation are holy. You know, I guess, I guess because they had, uh, they had been uh, given the, uh, the, the atonement by, by Aaron, they thought that they were all holy now. They only had to do that one time. I can remember my children, you know, they, they would, uh, we, we were, uh, give them a chore, you know, and, and one of the chores we gave them was washing the dishes. Can you imagine it was the disdain of them when they realized that, uh, that when they finished washing the dishes that first night, they weren't complete with their, uh, they weren't through with their, their, uh, their job, their chore. Because those dishes were going to be dirty again tomorrow, and uh, you know, and after that, and so they they thought, well, you know, once holy, always holy, you know. Don't you think we're we're good good enough to go here? Let let's do this, and they they really they really didn't have a a clue as to what they were doing. And so they, uh, and he says, uh, the the congregation is holy, and and then he, they they make this statement. That, that even makes it worse. Every one of them are holy. Every one of them are holy. Wow. And he says, not only that, they said, not only that, the Lord is among them. You know? And, oh, yeah, yeah, we've got God with us. You know why? Because we've got the tabernacle sitting over here. You know, they weren't, they weren't living at the tabernacle. I mean, they, they, weren't, uh, they weren't offering the, the offerings. They were just bringing offerings in. And I believe if they were true to the, to the, the understanding of it, they, they would be bringing an offering in every day. I don't think they did that. So when, uh, uh, then, then he says, Wherefore then lift up yourself above the congregation of the Lord. He says, Why are you lifting yourself up, Moses, above the congregation? You know? When Moses heard it, what happened to him? He fell on his face. You see, we, we always hear, see Moses, a, a man of meekness. He, what did he do? He didn't say, oh, yeah? Oh, oh yeah? You think, you think you know more than I do? He didn't say that at all, did he? He just let him, he let him talk. He let him get through. And he fell on his face before them. And, uh, and he spake unto Korah and to, unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy. Oh, 
No, well, tomorrow's going to come. And, uh, and uh, God is going to show who is holy and who is not. And, uh, and, then, he, and then he says, uh, and, uh, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him to whom, whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do, he said, then he says to, to Korah and his, his cohorts, take your censers. Censer is just a, a, little, a little pot that uh, uh, they put coals down in and they put incense in it, and it caused uh, the incense to go up as a, as a smoke. And, uh, and, they, and they, they were told to bring their, their little pots or their little in, uh, incense holders and that they were to bring those, and uh, and then they were to uh, put some coals in it, and make sure you got your, your things all ready now, because you know they had to be told things twice, because you you couldn't God never could tell them just once, and I'm sure Moses probably had to tell them over and over again. Now what it was it was supposed to bring tomorrow, you know, uh, and and so he uh, and uh, so he he tells them that uh, he says now now you do this. And you get your get your censors together, and and I mean everybody that you got right here, everybody's got to have a censor. And so he brought them together the next day, and uh, and he said, "Put fire therein, put incense in it before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy." Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Oh my goodness! Now, now they now Moses is is on the offensive. He's gone to uh, to tell them. Uh, now listen, uh, you you've taken too much upon you, you sons of Levi. The sons of Levi they're the ones that were uh, they were responsible for taking down the tabernacle and uh, and moving it from one place to another and then reassembling it. That they were the, they were the only ones that could do that. None of the others could do that. They had their jobs, and everybody hit, just did their job. But now they they want to take over for Moses. And uh, and verse number eight is Moses said to Korah, "Here I pray you, you son of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation." Of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? He said, Do you think it's just a small thing, the job that you have that God has given you? And Moses probably would have traded jobs with them any day because he was having to deal with all the problems that the people were bringing to him. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all the, all the brethren, sons of Levi, with thee, and seek you the priesthood also? He said, do you want that also? You know, they, they, were, they were just trying to grab everything they could to get the power. You see, that's, the, that's, where, that's where our politicians are today. Now, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. Our politicians, all of our politicians, they want to have authority. They want to be the one in charge. And, and, and that's, that's a human thing. It's, it's not something that, that has never been before, and it's not something that will never be again. They, they all want to have it, and that's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. And, and they'll do anything they can do to get it. If, whether it's right or it's wrong. Notice that uh, uh, he said uh, in, in verse number 10, He hath brought thee near to him, and all the brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek you the priesthood also? You know, the priesthood was only for one family out of the whole Levite group. And that was the, the family of Aaron. Now, no, no, other, no other family could be the, the, the priests. The, they couldn't serve in the priesthood. And uh, they were the only ones. In verse 11, he says, For which cause both thou and all thy co company are gathered together against the Lord. See, they thought they were just against Moses and Aaron. But they were against the Lord. 
And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? He says, what is Aaron? Aaron, Aaron didn't ask for this job, but it was, it was thrust upon him. He was, it was given to him by the Lord, and so he, he'd had it. And Moses sent to, to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. We're not coming. We're, we're not coming. And uh, he said, is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except that thou make thyself together, altogether a prince over us? You see, they, they, they were saying that Moses was trying to make himself a prince or a king over them. And, uh, and that was not Moses' motive or goal at all. I mean, he, he, would have, he could have walked out any time and been happy about it. But, but yet they, they, thought, they thought that that's what he wanted. And that was all he was about. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. They were standing right next to it. They sent 12 people in there to, to, check, to check out the land. And the first two that came back said, hey, let's go. Let's go in there. I believe Joshua and Caleb came back first because and that they were the ones carrying the, the grapes of Eskel. And they, they brought those grapes back and said, look at this grapes. Takes two of us to carry it. You, this, is, this is what's in the land. We just go in and take it. God will, will help us. God will fight for us. But there were ten people that had a different opinion. Those other ten, they, they were the ones that said, we be not able, we are too weak. And they were a bunch of, bunch of what were they? Lily-livered. <laughs> they were just a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, of people that, uh, they, they just really, they, they didn't have the, the gumption to get out of the rain, you know. They, they, were, they were just a, group of people that did not follow God. And they sure didn't, didn't trust in him. So it's a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness. Oh, killed them in the wilderness? You know, they were never supposed to be out there. They were supposed to be taking the land right now. But what did they do? They went, uh, they went, uh, 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 and told God, we're not able to do this, so uh, let's get another plan. So God said, okay, this is what the plan's going to be. You go down there by the Red Sea and go out into the wilderness. And then, and then that's, that's where you're going to go for the next 38 years. You're going to go out there, and until every last one of you that, that murmured and complained are dead in the wilderness. Now, every, every one of them is going to die. But the ones under the age of 20 are going to are begin to, given the opportunity to go into that land that flows with milk and honey. It was, it was a land that had everything. The houses were already built. The towns were already built. The roads were already made. Everything was, that was set up for them to, to succeed. They, they, could, they could have just marched right in there and taken this place. But they, they did not believe that they were able. And, and you know, the, 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 the shocking truth of it all is that they weren't able because they weren't able to even believe that God would take care of them and God would be the one that won the victory for them. And, uh, and so, uh, but, he, but he, they said, uh, well, he's going to kill us in the wilderness. No, not everybody. Not everybody's going to die out there in the wilderness. Except, he said, except that thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Verse 14, moreover, thou hast not brought us into the land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Guess what? It was their fault that they didn't go in to start with. But they wanted somebody else to blame. 
Isn't it, isn't it always somebody else's problem, fault? Somebody else is, is, is the one that, that didn't do something. So Moses was very wroth. Have you ever been wroth before? I have too. It's not a nice place to be. You know, but Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. You know, hey, <laughs> Lord, you just, you just don't, don't respect their offering. You just, Lord, you just tell, I'll just tell you what to do, Lord. You know, here's the thing. We don't tell God what to do. He tells us what to do. He says, I've not, he says, respect not their, uh, thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. He said, I, I haven't done anything to these people. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. They're the ones that keep saying that they can't. They can't. They can't. Moses was willing to go to, to tell them, hey, if we can go through the Red Sea, we can, we can go into the land. So Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put the incense in it, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they, they took every man his censer and put fire in it, and laid incense thereon, and, laid, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Those that, that, were, that were against Moses and those that were uh, not, not really against, against him, but not really for him either. And the Lord spake to Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Oops. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Have, have, have you ever been consumed in a moment? <laughs> I mean, I, I, think that's, that, uh, I think the only two that could have talked about that was the two sons of Aaron that, that were consumed by the fire in a moment. And, uh, you know, and... Uh, so they, they were the ones uh, that had to, uh, to suffer that. All right, so, uh, so he says, separate yourselves from among this congregation. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? You know, he made, he made a lot of sense. Moses made a lot of sense. In, in his intercessions he made for the people. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. And touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got up on the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. You know, it wasn't just them. It was everyone that they had as a relative. All of their relatives, all of the, all their people. Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, and all that pertain unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Not, not Moses. Not Moses, but the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them. Oh my goodness. They'd never seen anything like this. They'd never felt anything like this. I imagine it's sort of like living in, a, in, a, in some of those uh, subdivisions in Florida. 
uh, one day you're, you're, uh, you're living in a nice uh, little uh, one-level house with a swimming pool in the back, and the next time it's a lake <laughs> because it's a, uh, it, there's, there's a sinkhole that's opened up, and, uh, and it's swallowed up not only the swimming pool but also your house also. You know, and, and uh, there, there it is. All that you've worked for is, is, is in a hole. But now these people are standing there in the middle of the desert. There's, there, there's you know, it, it's just the desert. Desert land, dry, dusty ground. And uh, then the earth uh, opened up. Notice that it, uh, and uh, he said, uh, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. And their houses, that is their tents. See, they, they didn't have a chance to build houses in the, in the wilderness. They, they all lived in tents. And all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. You know what that is? That's hell. They went down alive into hell. As far as I know, they're the only ones that ever went into hell alive. The rest of the people die and then, and then lift up their eyes in hell. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. Oh, my goodness. Now, now they're thinking that they're going to go next. <laughs> and if God had done that, it would have been uh, perfectly fine because of what they had done to him. Every time they made a, a t said something against Moses, they said it against God. I think that's why we should not talk against the pastor. Even if you think he's wrong, just tell the Lord on him. Tell the Lord on him. But, but don't, don't be saying something about him that you, you could re learn to regret someday. And then all, all that were around him fled at the cry of them, and they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And then... And also there came a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. They were all standing around, hey, you know, hey, we're, we're going you know, to show Moses who he, who's the boss. We're going to show him who's in charge in this thing. And it wasn't them. It, it was Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, and take up the, the censers out of the burning, and scatter thou the fire yonder. See, they must, see God must be a southerner, because he's talking about yonder. Amen? Over yonder. Have you ever? Have you ever? For they are hallowed. They're hallowed. The censers of, those, of these sinners against their own souls... Let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar. So they offered them before the Lord. Therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they were, that they were burnt, had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering for the altar. To be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah and his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses. How quickly they forget. How quickly we, we, we lose track. And we, and we see that you know, well, we didn't get swallowed up by the earth to last night, so everything must be okay. And so they begin to murmur again. They, that's all they knew how to do. 
murmur, complain. You know? It's no wonder that God wanted to destroy them all. You know? Murmur, murmur, murmur. Complain, complain, complain. I think God gets tired of hearing complaints. So if you're going to complain to God, you know, in your prayers, uh, why don't you find something good to complain about? <laughs> Lord, I don't have enough time to pray, but I want to pray all that I can, you know. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But let's, let's, let's be careful about how we pray because God is listening. And he may give you exactly what you ask for like he did to the people of Israel. I, I just, I, I, was, I was looking at this and I was thinking so much that, uh, you know, if they had just obeyed God, they, they, would have been, they would have been so happy. They would have been living in the land that God had, had given them. God would have gone in there and, and he would have driven those people out with, with hornets. He told them that that's what he would do. But guess what? They said, our children will be killed. Our children will die. You know, just a bunch of whiners. You know, whine, whine, whine. It's, it's a, you know, what do, what do we think? It's a memorial, he said, to the children of Israel. When they look at that the covering over the altar, and, and they're, they're going to, so you know, the little ones will ask, what's that thing? What's that thing with all that burnt looking stuff over there? And he said, well, oh, that's, that's, that's what happens if you don't follow God and you let, let other people lead you astray. He said, but on the morrow, all the congregation murmured against Moses and against Aaron saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. Moses and Aaron didn't do anything. They got blamed for a lot, didn't they? That was God doing that. They murmured. They, they, you've killed. You've killed them. It came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and Aaron that they looked down, they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. You know what they did then? They stopped what they were doing, and all they could do is look at the glory of the Lord there and thinking, have we, have we offended God? Have we offended God? Of course they had. You know, so many, so many Christians today are offending God all the time. They're, they're just offending God when, when we... we, we have left the, uh, the preaching of the word and gone to entertaining and, and to uh, just to social networking. And that's, that's not what God had intended. So it came to pass that the congregation was gathered against them that the glory of the Lord appeared. And when God shows up, it's never for a good thing most of the time it's going to be for a bad thing. Moses and Aaron came before the congregation, uh, of the, the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, you notice that God didn't talk to anybody else in the, in the congregation. He didn't talk to any of those other people that were murmuring. He only talked to Moses and to Aaron. And uh, he says, get you up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment. It's the second time he said that in, in this chapter. And that I can consume them in a moment. He says, don't they understand? I could, you know, I brought them into this world and I can take them out, you know. Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some of the things that we say in sort of in jest. So it came to pass... Uh, boy, that uh, uh, he, he stood, uh, that Aaron took as Moses commanded. What did Moses command? Moses looked over at Aaron and said, quick, get you a censer. See, he had, 
Aaron, uh, Moses has been through this before. Moses has been through this before. He has been through where the, the people are so obnoxious that God is just going to destroy them all. And, and we think that, oh, we, we serve a God of love, you know. He loves us. He would never do that to us. Well, he would too. If he'd do it to them, he would do it to us. Well, he could. And, and he would be right in doing it too. Because you can't, God is long-suffering. We, I'm, I'm glad he is. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. I mean, he, uh, it takes a lot to make him mad, but when he gets mad, step out of the way because it's, uh, it's going to be on. Notice that he says that <clears throat> and Aaron did as Moses commanded. He ran to the midst of the congregation. He's got his censer with him. He's got, he's got fire in it. He's got the uh, from off of the altar. He's got the incense on it. He's gone into there, and he's, and he's, he's trying to get as many of those people uh, atoned for as he can. And behold, he said the plague was begun among the people. What was that? The plague? You mean, you mean God is, is going to make them pay for what they did? They're murmuring, everyone that murmured. You know, he knows how to, he knows how to get even. And, and when he does, it is, it is double even. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people, and he stood between the dead and the living. Aaron stood there with this, with the, with this atoning, uh, atonement offering to God. For the people that, that were murmuring and complaining and, 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 and belly aching. You know, that was, a, that was a word that was taught me in the seventh grade by, by one of my teachers. And it, and it was quit your belly aching. And he, and he would write it up there and it was one long word, quit your belly aching. You know, and that's, why is, why is that important? It's because there's somebody that's listening. Always somebody is listening. So he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. You know, we had a plague here in America not too long ago, for two years. It was a plague. They called it COVID-19. We're still, we're still not over it. Probably my voice, what's going on with my voice is probably because I had it back in January. But, you know, the, the idea that, that we can, uh, can just flippantly say, well, God wouldn't do that to us. But he would. So Aaron stood between the dead and the living. Sometimes pastor has to stand between the dead and the living. In order to get atonement, covering, propitiation for all these, all the sins of the people. You say, well, when does he do that? He's, he has to do it. Sometime he's got to bring everybody's name up and say, uh, Lord, uh, the, this, this, these, are, these are good church members here. Uh, Lord, but these other people, they, they sort of have, have lost their way. You know? God has a way of bringing them back. So he died. they died in the plague were 14,700. Beside them that died at, about the matter of Korah. So we're looking at around 15,000 people. 15,000 people at one time. But God, God knows how to get rid of the murmurs and complainers. He really, he really did it. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the plague was stayed. I wish that was the end of the story. But that's not the end of the story because we've still got all the way to chapter 28, I think it is. We've got a lot more chapters to go until we find out the, 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 the end of the story. And the end of the story... All of the people has died 
that were above the age of 20, when they, when they would not go into Canaan and take the land. Third, 40 years later, they go around to the uh, Jordan River, and they're standing on the banks of the Jordan River looking over into that land. And they're, they're waiting on God to say, go in. You know, it was, it was a good thing they did. Because I know what people do. Hey, let's just go on in. We can take care of this, you know. They tried that at AI, remember that? They're just a small group of people. I mean, this is a small town. We can take this town. Well, they... They, they, they went running with their tails tucked between their legs when those people came out. Why is that? Because God wasn't with them. Is God with them? You know, if God's not with you, then you're in trouble. That's why we want God to be with us in People's Baptist Church, you know. So that's the end of the 17th chapter, or 16th chapter. So we'll look at, uh, it's, uh, at the Aaron's rod that budded next week. And uh, some, it's going to be a, a really interesting study. How does a dry stick uh, sprout flowers and buds and even almonds? I wonder if it was an almond branch. I guess it was. If it wasn't, that, that would have uh, been against God's nature because it's everything after his kind. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's the way God had created it, and that's the way it was. So let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you so much for the precious word of God. Lord, how, how wonderful, how marvelous it is. And, Lord, how you see into tomorrow and know the things that are going to happen tomorrow. And, Lord, you haven't, you haven't given us the ability to do that because we would, uh, we, it would drive us insane knowing what was going to happen on tomorrow. But Lord, just help us to live for the day. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Let's make the best of it. In Jesus' name, amen.